Update, my 28 female, sister 35 female, is demanding I either terminate or let her adopt my baby. Original post, I, 28 female, am currently 19 weeks pregnant. My partner, 29 male, and I are very excited, as this is our first baby and we have been trying for a few months. We announced the pregnancy a month ago at a dinner party we hosted, and everyone seemed surprised and overjoyed. My sister, 35 female, who I will call Karen, immediately burst into tears and asked me how I could do this to her. I stared at her and asked, what? And she started ranting, saying that I always got everything I wanted. Which is not true, I worked hard for all that I have. Then added that she knew I got pregnant just so I could rub her infertility in her face. She screamed at me for five minutes about how I didn't deserve to be a mother and she should be the one pregnant right now. My parents left with her soon after and the party was basically over. I was really disturbed by my sister's reaction because we had been pretty close before and she had never done anything like this. Karen called me the next day, apologizing for how she acted at my announcement and asked if we could meet up for coffee. I accepted. We met up and she pretended as if nothing had happened. Then she started a big speech about her infertility, how heartbreaking it is to be growing life inside of her, just to lose it, and how she had always wanted children of her own. She then proceeded to ask me if I could consider getting it terminated, to make things fair, or letting her adopt my baby. I stared at her and asked if she was serious. Karen said she was, so I just dropped my part of the bill on the table and left. Lester texted me a rant that night about how I'd made Karen cry and how all they ever wanted was to be parents and that this meant so much to them and that I owed them for being more successful than them. I and my partner invested many years into our jobs and we have worked very hard to earn what we earn now. I told them that my partner and I had been hoping for kids too and that I was not giving up my baby. He hung up. She later sent me a long letter, four pages, about how she had always wanted to be a mother and could I consider either terminating or letting her adopt my baby. How I should care about my older sister's happiness. How she would make a better mom. How the oldest kid should have the first grandchild. And how I could always just have another baby since it was so easy for me to conceive. After that, she quieted down some, and I thought we were done with this. Except, it wasn't. She had posted my sonogram on her Facebook, and captioned it, Lester and I are expecting. We can't wait to meet our little princess. I was seeing red. I texted her and demanded she take the post down. No reply. I texted Lester, no reply. So, I called my mother and told her what happened. She was able to make Karen take the post down luckily enough. Karen has called me petty for calling my mom and has continued to demand I give up my baby. I sent her a letter explaining that I had had enough of her nonsense, I am keeping my baby, and that I recommend she get some help. I added that if she continues, I will not hesitate to call 999. This weekend, however, was the absolute last straw. My mom and dad have the spare key to my house, and while she was over at their house for brunch, she took the key. Then while my partner and I were at work, she broke into our house and stole all the clothing, blankets, nappies, bottles, and pretty much any other item we had bought for the baby except furniture. It was later returned after my mom found it in her car. I called 999, but they told me I couldn't do anything because I had no proof and because it was all returned. My partner and I are moving in April, but I'm still scared my sister will find out where we live and take my child. I get that she's upset and jealous due to her infertility, but that shouldn't mean I have to give up my baby. My parents know about this and they have been doing their best to get her some help. She doesn't want to adopt because she wants a child that's her own flesh and blood. I'm due in August and the stress she's causing cannot and will not be good for me or the baby. My partner is looking into a cease and desist letter. Is there anything else I should do or say? I'm scared for my baby. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Your sister is mentally ill and needs help. I don't say that as a joke or to insult her. She's sick and dangerous. Honestly, I think your fears are well-founded. I would block her on everything and give you parents very strict orders that if you find out they've given her access to any info about your living situation or pregnancy that you will be forced to cut them all off for your safety. I'd also go talk to a lawyer to see if there's anything you can do to protect yourself here. In the US, you can get a restraining order so that the person will be arrested if they come near you. Last though, would be to make sure you have cameras recording your new place. All of this OP. Forget the fact that she is your sister. Treat her as a dangerous stalker. Block her on everything. Lock down all your social media accounts to the most private settings you can, so she can't get pics and so on from there, even with a fake account. Do not share your new address with anyone you don't fully trust. Set the boundaries with your parents that if they are the leak, you'll cut them off too and mean it. Same with any mutual friends. Edit and document everything. Every attempt at contacting you. Every interaction with friends or family that you hear about. Everything. 
Write down times, places, dates, and descriptions. This may be your only hope in getting a restraining order later. I started documenting back in February, don't worry. You should block her number, get a restraining order, move far, far away, and never speak to her again. She should definitively get a restraining order, as her sister seems serious about wanting that baby perhaps even to a point that she might do something crazy. We are documenting everything we can, and we'll be getting our restraining order as soon as possible. My dude, that is deeply unsettling. Your sister sounds like she needs much more help than your mom can provide, and you need to be distanced from her. I'm glad you're moving, and that fear you're feeling is real. First of all, none of what she's doing or saying should have any impact on you becoming a parent. You are not responsible for her life. The fact that she's escalated to breaking into your home is very concerning, and if you feel like your safety is threatened, you need to keep in contact with your local police. I'm so sorry you're going through this. Keep being clear with your parents that she cannot be allowed to be around you, that she cannot be allowed to visit, and that if she comes around, you will contact the police. Document these moments, especially any criminal ones, so that you have a clear record of what she's been doing if you do need to involve the police. When you move, ask to speak with a desk sergeant and make a statement so that they have something in writing at your local station just in case. Now for the update six days later. The support I've received from this forum is overwhelming. Thank you all for your comments. Although I couldn't reply to all of them, they are appreciated. We have had the locks changed, cameras installed, and a ring doorbell. I've started saving every letter and screenshotting every message my sister has sent and plan to take them to court for a restraining order very soon. We have also been seriously documenting everything. My husband and I are planning a trip to Ireland for our anniversary next week and it's going to be good to clear our heads from my sister. I've called 999 to report her for harassment and they gave her a warning. She's contacted me saying that if I won't give her my child, I can at least pay for multiple rounds of IVF, which I have not replied to other than refusing. She's been begging my parents to convince me to give up my baby, which they refuse to do. They have also been given a statement that basically says that if they give her my contact information, they will not see my baby, to which they have agreed. I've since changed my phone number and we are moving very soon. My sister does not know our new address. She actually stood on our stoop for 20 minutes a few days ago, banging on our door and yelling. My husband opened a window and told her that if she didn't leave, he would let the dog out and threatened to call the police. We have a rather small, but hyper puppy who jumps on everyone and barks a lot, and she is quite scared of dogs actually, so this made her leave. I started working from home last week, as did my husband, and we followed the advice of one of the comments, washed all of the baby stuff, as well as made sure none of the food in our kitchen was messed with. None was, luckily. We're planning on getting a restraining order as soon as possible and are looking forward to our trip. I'm already sick of being pregnant, and I'm not even in the third trimester. I just want my baby. Thank you all again for your wonderful advice and I may update you again when the baby is born. Her sister is actually mentally ill. She needs an intervention. Sister is mentally ill and found such a great guy who supports her in her insanity. Codependency. OP is right to be scared. Sis sounds like someone that would flat out steal that baby. Sis needs counseling, stat. Do not, under any circumstances, let her know where you are moving to. Make sure she doesn't follow you at any point to your new place. No, this sister sounds like someone who would cut a baby out of a pregnant woman's womb. She's completely crazy and needs to be involuntarily committed before she can do lethal damage, in addition to the emotional damage she's already inflicted. 100% exactly what I was thinking. She already posted a sonogram on social media, like she was preparing the world for the fact she would have a baby in six months. Super scary and worrisome for the OP. I had a coworker who also struggled with infertility. She lost her only child to a stillbirth and never recovered from it. She discovered that I, a young healthy and likely fertile woman, did not want children and demanded that I conceive and birth a child to give to her. I thought she was joking. She was not. Infertility can mess with your mind in all kinds of horrible ways, but sister takes it to a new level. Hopefully she gets the help she needs, but something tells me this will continue to escalate. How did everything play out with your coworker if you don't mind me asking? The first time she said it, I laughed it off awkwardly because I thought she was joking. The second time, I told her firmly but politely to F off. She never mentioned it again but was noticeably colder toward me. Now for the last story. My 24 female, mom's affair partner who kicked me out of the house, now wants to reconnect without talking about the past. How should I respond? Let's start with some history for context. About 17 years ago, my mom cheated on my dad with another married man, let's call him Bill. 
My dad found out, which led to a divorce. My dad has narcissistic tendencies which resulted in a very painful and messy divorce proceeding where I was put in the middle of my parents' fights. Several court cases lasted all the way up to when I was 15. Meanwhile the relationship between my mom and Bill continued. I disliked him very much. He was the man my mom cheated on my dad with. Bill was a very prideful man too and he had told my dad that he would soon be the man who tucked his children into bed. And when I started speaking up against him more, he would tell me my opinions didn't matter, that he came first to my mom and whatnot. He'd do this behind her back, which made me look like the bad guy when I reacted to it. Then when my mom was there, he would act all nice and like he was trying so hard to start a relationship. During this period I turned inward more and more. I'd avoid Bill as much as I could. He slept at our house about three days out of the week. During a visit to my grandma on the 1st of January when I was 14, he told me that that would be the year we would make up. On the way back, we drove past a house, and Bill commented he may put in an offer so we could all live there together. I protested, said I would live with my dad if they'd move in together full-time. He got mad and kicked me out of the car. I had to walk home for an hour. When I got back home, they told me I should move in with my dad, which I did, which surprised them. Me and my mom didn't speak for five years. Me and her have since made up. She has told me she was in survival mode because of the unhappy relationship with my dad and has said she would have done things differently if she could. I have kept avoiding Bill this whole time, only being around him during family events. It would be nice to be able to visit my mom's house without worrying about him, but I struggle leaving things behind me. I don't need a full-on apology for everything that happened. The whole situation was messy and it's long ago. However, I would really appreciate something like, it wasn't my intention to make you feel unimportant, or I never meant to come between you and your mom and so on. Anything like that would help. I told this to my mom so she could talk to Bill about it. At first, he didn't want to say anything, but today a few months later, I have received a message. He said that he wants to leave the past behind him and move on, for me to not lose more time with her and that it would be a nice birthday present to my mom as it's her birthday today. I responded that I have no issue seeing him when I come to visit my mom, but for me to start with a clean slate, I would like to know how he looks at the past now. Is it a reasonable request to need to talk about the past a bit in order to start over, or should I just let it go because it was so long ago? He never hit me or anything, just provoked me behind my mom's back. How should I continue? Now for the top advice. Of course it is a reasonable request OP. Obviously, Bill is not acknowledging his mistakes and maybe he doesn't even feel like these were mistakes. And it sounds like your mother isn't much better. Allowing a man to kick your daughter out of the car and out of the house at the age of 14 and then going no contact. I mean, who are these people? Both of them should apologize profusely to you and ensure you feel okay around them. Don't accept anything less than this. This is rug sweeping, not an apology. Without an apology, I would think that repeat behavior is likely from both of them. Use that as you wish. I am not saying you absolutely must or must not see them, but have a clear vision that they have not apologized. Having those boundaries is far from childish. I wouldn't want anything to do with Bill either. He sounds like a sleaze who relies on manipulation way too much. Your mom is not who you want her to be. You seem to fixate on your father or Bill having these negative traits, but her actions show you she is worse in many ways. You are peddling a narrative to yourself that she was an observer to all this with no agency or she was blissfully unaware. Bill wasn't a master of stealth, she knew, and ignored it for her new guy. Now Bill is being magnanimous, which I am sure your mother is delighted by. He is able to skip accountability because he is a D-head, and because your mother allows him to. You will get no honest admission of guilt or heartfelt apology from him. Your mom probably doesn't believe he even owes it, but sees that something is needed to get you back in the fold. Take a step back and examine how these patterns keep happening and you will find more than one parent with dark triad issues. Or she was blissfully unaware. Bill wasn't a master of stealth, she knew and ignored it for her new guy. Saying nasty things and then making sure no one knows they are capable of it is actually something narcissists do really really well. I've dealt with a narcissist professionally and it amazed me how much toxicity they were able to conceal under the charm. It's not uncommon at all. I'd bet Bill played similar head games with the mom. Mom is likely a victim herself, which is something kids pick up on. Mom did have the ability to choose, even if she likely never believed that. That's hard for children in abusive situations to see that the victim parent is also a perpetrator of their ordeal by not stopping it or removing them from the situation. He's bad, but your mother is worse. Survival mode or not, she allowed that to happen to her 14-year-old daughter. Maybe you need to rethink your relationship with her as well. My dad was very manipulative, which did give Bill an even worse start than he would have had from just cheating. 
I honestly think my mom didn't believe it was that bad for a long time, until I didn't come back. But she still stayed with Bill, so she really isn't sorry or putting you first. I don't feel like I can demand she breaks up with a man she loves and who she says treats her well, just because I don't like him and he's immature. He never mistreated me, called me names or anything. He did mistreat you. Kicking you out of the car to make you walk an hour at 14 is abuse. 